Unit 9.3, reduce radicals with different indexes. So what that means is, remember, index on a radical has the denominator. That's what the index is. So we're going to be reducing them and simplifying the fractions with fractional exponents. Now, we did this a little in the last one, in the last um, 9.2. Um, but this one is going to be a little different little bit more complex, not too bad. But what you have to know for this one is you have to remember that when you write the number 1, because we're going to be raising a lot of exponents to number 1, you can write that as any number over itself, any term over itself. So for example, I can make it 6 over 6, 12 over 12, 8 over 8, that's 1. But what you also need to know is this can kind of be broken down into a multiplication as like 6 over 1 times 1 over 6. If you know this fact, this little section is going to be very simple. Knowing that these are all the same thing, it's going to make this very simple. But if not, um, hopefully by the end you will um, understand what I mean. So something like this, this problem. When you're doing it, again, when it's a power to a power, so this is a power, and this whole thing is also have our, their own powers, you multiply the exponents, so we distribute them through. And when we distribute this through, remember, multiplying fractions is no problem. Excuse me. Multiplying fractions is no problem. Multiply tops, multiply bottoms. That means you multiply the tops, you multiply the bottoms. Okay, and when we reduce this, we get one third. So when I multiply one half times two thirds, I get x to the one third power. Down here, if I multiply a half times negative two, remember that negative two is just negative two over one. Please do that if you ever forget or use your calculator. But this kind of math shouldn't be too bad. Multiply tops, you get negative two multiply bottoms, you get 2, you reduce that, you get negative 1. So when I multiply that, I get x to the negative first power. Okay, I still have x's in both the top and the bottom, so I do need to combine those again. And when I do that, I this is division, so I subtract. So 1 third minus a negative 1, again, 1 third minus a negative 1, that's the same as 1 third plus 1. Do the math, you get 4 over 3. Okay? Now we know we can convert that into a radical. Remember, in, out. So the 3 goes here, the 4 goes there. Done. Okay, so that's really what the big deal is about today. Okay, I don't know what happened. I hope everything's all right. Okay, so for this one, <coughs> This one is the one where you have to remember that 1 is the same as like 6 over 6. I want to write this, as it says up here, as a single radical. So if I want to write this as a single radical, this one, if I wrote this one as a radical, it would be the square root of x, and this one would be the cubed root of y squared. Uh, that doesn't help me. Okay, so what I need to do, excuse me, what I need to do is get them so they have the same indexes. I need to get these numbers to be the same. And that number is called a common denominator. So a common denominator for 2 and 3 is 6. And what I do is I raise the exponent, I raise this whole power thing to 1. But as you remember, be, well because you know when you raise it to the first power it doesn't do anything, it doesn't change it. But what you remember is I need, if I can do this, everything is going to be a little bit simpler. Okay? So what I do, and this uh, might take a little while to get used to for you to understand, but remember, 6 over 6 is the same as 6 over 1 times 1 over 6, right? Multiply tops, multiply bottoms. So if I take this, just the top part, and multiply it through, it'll leave the 1 6th on the outside, 
which is going to make it have that same radical. And that 6 thrown in there, watch what happens when, this, when I throw the 6 in there. I multiply the tops, remember, and I'm going to leave the bottoms out here. The bottom's going to stay outside. And I multiply the 6 in. I get 6 over 2. And then I multiply the 6 in, just the top. I get 12 over 3. Okay, so far that doesn't look awesome, but 6 over 2 is 3. 12 over 3 is 4. And I do all this to the 1 6th power. Now this, I can write as a single radical. Because the whole this whole thing is being raised to the 1 6th power. So that goes inside, that goes out. And now I can just write this as 6 on the outside, 1 on the inside. So it's x to the third, y to the fourth. Done. Okay, so writing it as a single radical, you're learning a lot about exponents and how we can manipulate them for our own purposes. Okay, so the basic idea, now this is for any time you're rewriting stuff. Rewrite all radicals as rational exponents and make sure you put a 1 on all unlabeled exponents. It's very important that you do that um, so that you don't get confused. Then we do the whole to the power of one thing, which hopefully you'll understand shortly if you don't get it already. So first thing, rewrite all of them with rational exponents. So this one, um, 2 over 3. So this one is that. And all of this is raised to the second power. Simplify as usual. Distribute in. So multiply 2. Remember, this is 2 over 1. So if I multiply 2 times 1 fourth, it's x to the 2 over 4, or 1 half. Multiply this. This is y to the 4 over 3. Okay? That's it. Now, I wanted to write it as a single radical, and that's the problem. What I need to do, and the whole point of this, so if you have another way you can think of or another way that makes more sense to you, please feel free, I need to get both of these denominators to be the same number. That's what I need. Um, so if you want to just get them to have a common denominator, you can do that too. I find that if I just find the common denominator, the common denominator here... Um, is 6 again. That's nice. So the common denominator here is 6. If I just do this, I leave the 1 sixth on the outside, and I let the top one, and I multiply that one in, just the top part of the fraction, and leave the bottom part here, I get x to the 6 over 2, y to the 24 over 3, and then all of this, so then I need this, this 6 here to be there, and now that 6 is on the bottom, so I do that. So 6 over 2 is 3, 24 over 3 is 8, and then this is just the cube, the 6th root there. So this 1 6 um, makes this thing over here. That's it. Okay, it takes practice to do this. It is a little... Um, unnerving at first, but try it out. Um, see if you can do this one possibly on your own. If not, I am going to just work my way through it. Okay, everything's already has rational exponents. The y doesn't have an exponent, so I'm going to put its 1 there. Then I simply distribute that 3 halves to each of those. Remember, we're multiplying because it's power to a power. So when I do that, I get x to the first power y to the 3 over 2. So I'm just multiplying. I'm not going to go over multiplying fractions again. 3 over 4 and y, 3 over 4. Now, I want to make it so that I only have one exponent to one power. So here I have x's, so I have to subtract them. So I have to do 1 minus 3 fourths. So when I do 1 minus 3 fourths, I simply get x to the 1 fourth. I have to do 3 halves minus 3 fourths, and when I do that, I get 3 fourths. Okay, look here. 
they both already have a common denominator. So this is also an option. If they don't have a common denominator, you can get them to have one. Okay, and once they get the common denominator, you simply factor out the fours on the bottom. And when you factor out the fours on the bottom, you get a one-fourth out here, and you're just left with the stuff on the top, the one and the three. What you might want to think about is, I don't want to confuse you, so it's as simple as that. The top numbers go here, here, and here, and the bottom number goes out here. Okay, but it, since it is on the bottom, it has to stay on the bottom, so it needs to be 1 over 4. Then writing this as a radical is as simple as that, x, y to the third. So this thing goes inside the radical, and that 4 goes on the outside. That is all. Okay, try these on your own. I'll try this one on your own. The next one's a little different. Um, I'm going to pause it and show you the answer in a second. Remember, make everything rational exponents and reduce normally. All right, so here's the answer right here. Um, the common denominator was 6, so that's why the 6 is on the outside here. And then I just divided, and it's all, that's all there is, y to the third. Okay, if you're having problems with adding and subtracting fractions, it's a whole other story, but you can still work on that. So this one's a little different. Um, you're just working with exponents in a different way. So you can see here, um, and this is just kind of to, to mess with you a little bit, I guess, but to also have you see things that you may not, sorry about that, see things that um, you may not have seen or you may not have noticed. So this is x to the one-fifth. Okay, and remember like terms are terms that have the same base and the same exponent. These have the same base, they have the same exponent, these are like terms. We're subtracting, we're not dividing, we're not multiplying, we are subtracting. So that means exponents don't change when you subtract. So this is simply 2x to the one-fifth power. And this is 2 like that. That's it, if you want to write it in radical form. Um, in this particular one, I, we want it in radical form. Okay, that's really it. The major concepts of today, that um, if you had a problem, this was what the problem was. Um, it may take a little practice for you to figure out, but for the most part, it, the basic idea is this. All right, it may look confusing, but this is just saying, if I have like x squared, and I raise it to the first power, I can make it anything. I can make it 5 over 5. That's the first power. I can just rewrite this as a radical or as, you know, anything I want it to be um, by taking this 5 and multiplying it in. Okay, if I take that 5 and multiply it in, this 5 stays on the outside, so it would be x to the 10th to the 1 5th power. That's it. I want to write it in radical form. There it is. So this is the same as x squared. It's just we're raising it to the 5 over 5 power. Okay? This is a concept that's actually very important in this class. Um, and this is just the beginning, the introduction of it. So hopefully by the end you'll understand it. But this right here is just uh, an alternative to it. What you're going to be seeing in this class in the future is they're going to say something like, you have x to the, um, what, well, let's leave it as n, x to the n power. Okay? Write it as um, to the tn power. Okay? So that means they want you to put a t right here. But you can't just put a t right there. You just can't. So what you have to do is if I multiply by t, I have to divide by t on the outside. Or the other way around. If you divide by t, you have to multiply it by n on the outside. So that's it. That's all that it means. This one's on the top of the fraction. This one's on the bottom of the fraction. So it's really just one. I hope you uh, kind of understand this a little bit. A little practice tomorrow. Maybe we'll uh, solidify it. Or you just yell at your teacher and say, I suck. Either way, <laughs> have a good night. Bye.